Welcome to Binary Jazz, a podcast about stuff. Um, yep, yep, there we are. Uh, there's three of us. It's uh, Binary Gary, who's Gary in real life, and Allison Plus, who's Allison in real life, and Jazz Sequence, that's me in real life. My name is Chris. This is a podcast that we do every, you know, week or so. And uh, Allison brings us a topic, and Gary and I don't know what the topic is, and we try to talk about the topic as if we did know what the thing was. Uh, and uh, that's that's how that's how the gig works. And I have to say ahead of time that I don't have a full understanding of the topic I'm bringing to the table. <laughs> that so makes I'm it even hoping... better. That's like a triple. Makes blind. three of us. So I'm almost hoping that one of you knows what it is so you can complete the explanation that I have going in my head. <laughs> maybe maybe we could maybe maybe we can break our rule of not googling it like after it's been revealed and then we could collectively uh <laughs> come to a come to an understanding uh yeah. 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 Okay. Wait. I don't know if I have There we go. Yeah. Are we doing hoods? Okay, I can do a hood. <laughs> I famously said uh, on Twitter that one of the hardest problems in computer science is choosing which black hoodie to wear. So you I don't have black on, hoodies. Then... I only have gray hoodies. I'm sorry, Gary. I mean, black is not. It's not. It's a metaphor, Chris. Is it though? And mine's not a hoodie. It's more like a tunic with a hood. So I guess hoodie's also a metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Gary, about your day of, of Zoom calls that we are capping off, but hopefully this is a, 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 a easier cap to the marathon. Yeah, I mean, the problem is you just don't get Gary at his best, but I actually think that's when some of the magic happens, so <laughs> we'll just ride it out and see. I mean, you could also argue that maybe we've never gotten Gary at his best because we're not in person. So that's 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 Very an opinion. That's a thought. Yeah, that's an opinion. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as, as, as a person who has been in person with Gary, <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Love it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I have another call after this too. I, I've been on calls all day too. I, I just didn't realize that that was what my day was today before going into the day. Yeah. I've written like, I think three lines of code today. Well, you're three lines ahead of me. Maybe five. <laughs> Did you, have you all ever had to do uh, Fizz Buzz on an interview? The Fizz no. Buzz problem? No. Someone asked me and I refused. Does that count? <laughs> I think it does. Um, Maybe. I, I, I don't know. I, I should say that I refused politely. I, I was basically just like, I'd love to demonstrate my skills in a way that actually applies to your mm. code base. Um, yeah. Can we do something that does that? <laughs> um, so in this particular case, it wasn't like a, can you do a fizz buzz? It was like, a, uh, it wasn't even like, can you do pseudocode? It was just like, like, here's the problem. Like, uh, can we dialogue through like some different things we would consider in solving this uh, in our context? Um, so that was fun. Fizzbuzz, for those that aren't familiar, is the from a number one through n. Um, iterate from a number one through n. If the number is divisible by three, echo fizz. Divisible by five, echo buzz. Divisible by both, echo both. Otherwise, echo the integer, uh, and that was it. That's it. That's the whole problem. But it's also silly to have those kind of conversations, and I think we discussed this. Is like that's not a reflective of like a real real world need because there's so many things that like can n be negative. Like what mm -hmm. what should happen? Like in case of error, like should we just halt the program or should we like? There's a lot of things we need that we we would care about that that this presupposes don't matter um like is the output just black and white text like do we you know i have a friend we... that went on a big rant and was just like our world is not just whole numbers we are more than that <laughs> <laughs> and i was and just like this is where we're friends 
<laughs> and I agree with that sentiment 100%. Um, yeah. I can't see. This has to come down. <laughs> What's the best um, lip? Um, what do you call this stuff? Chapstick. Chap lip? No. Chapstick. Yes. Lip Why, balm. What, what the word lip? Lip balm. What's the best lip balm? This one. <laughs> Is that Burt's? Yeah. Burt's Bees. Oh, Burt's I have bees. that too. And it's coconut and pear, which I particularly enjoy. I have that, but I grabbed this off of the nightstand before getting in this call. Um, Carmex. Mm -hmm. uh, and it burns. <laughs> Yeah, Carmex yeah, is, is a bit it. too heavy for me. Yeah, I mean, like I would appreciate it if I knew it was coming, but also I'm like, uh, well, okay, lips, you were more chap than I thought. <laughs> it feels like a punishment rather than like so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The doctor's like, you're gonna feel some discomfort. What? <laughs> uh, I've never done a fizz buzz. That's good. Actually, you. actually, before you described the the mechanics of the problem, I don't think I I mean, I, I knew that it was a programming problem that is often done in interviews, but I had never actually seen or heard the problem prior to that. So I didn't know the specifics, but it's very similar to the to one of the programming, one of the first programming pro problems I, I had to solve in like school when I was actually taking a C++ course, which was um, to write a function that would um, calculate and output the Fibonacci sequence. Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason why like Fibonacci henceforth became like a recurring theme for me because I struggled hard with that. Because uh, I have an app for that. <laughs> yeah, I struggled hard with that particular uh, problem uh, and uh, sat down with a friend of mine who kind of like, you know, essentially pair programmed with me, but like conceptually, um, like because I don't think I actually had like a C++ compiler on my computer. So we had to do it like in like actually writing it out. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not recursive, uh, is it? No, it's not recursive. You just no. need to keep the, you just need to keep track of the previous yeah. value. But I yeah. mean, the first step is even knowing what the Fibonacci sequence is. Uh-huh. Totally and, and under, well, uh, not, not just, I mean, I knew what the Fibonacci sequence was, but understanding the logic behind the Fibonacci sequence is, uh -huh. is, yeah. Like, like it, yeah. understanding how it makes sense is like critical, <laughs> fundamental to understanding how to solve the problem. Uh, the Fibonacci sequence, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Fibonacci sequence, is a sequence of numbers that essentially adds uh, the previous two numbers to create the next number in the sequence. And it, it also is about ba not bounded by logical rules because like the first three numbers are like, well, we're just going to start it off because it's not possible. One, one, to do two, it. three, five. Right. Yeah. Uh, eight. If 13. you didn't, if you didn't start off with one, one, then the whole thing just falls apart. <laughs> just crumbles. Right. <laughs> well, that's exist. the problem is if, is if, if you start from null or zero, like it doesn't go very far. Right. So yeah. Adding zeros, sequence is zero. Like, Crap. Zero, we are still zero, right where zero, we started. Zero. <laughs> yeah. Fibonacci's usefulness is constrained by the first input. Where does that one come from? I like the one had to come from somewhere. This is what bothers me about Fibonacci. I actually think that we've gotten to the root of my, my disgust with Fibonacci right here. This has been a very <laughs> useful session. Thank you. <laughs> we're, like, we're more worthwhile than most therapy, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Because therapists yeah. don't care about Fibonacci. <laughs> Can you imagine I mean, me sitting down and like, truth can we talk about Fibonacci most programmers today? don't care about Fibonacci either. <laughs> I, that's going to be, that's going to be the, the, that's going to be how I start my next conversation. Can we talk about Fibonacci today, please? Like, where did the one come from? Like, I, I just can't, I can't sit here with clear conscience and assume that it just. This it seems just, like a like, quick Wikipedia would solve why it starts at one. Well. As someone who trolls Wikipedia for topics. Gosh, I love Wikipedia. Fibonacci. We can get there first. Maybe that'll be one of my uh... Fibonacci sequence. Number is so much preceding. One sequence family starts from zero and one. Although some authors admit the initial terms can start the sequence from one and one or from one and two. Well, it doesn't tell me how that one got there. In relation to mm. the golden ratio matrix. <laughs> yeah. So we use it for um, sprint points, which like one, two, three, five, like, okay, fine.
I guess. Like whatever. You do you use twos? A lot a lot of a lot of teams I've been on there's there's always a debate on as to whether to use the two or whether to drop the two and go from one to three. No, I always I, I never use twos. I I always it's use one or three. These kind of stimulating debates that really really <laughs> make me work in this the workplace. But like so if Fibonacci started from like 0.5, right? Like it's not an integer, but it gets you there. Also, story points are BS anyway. Who cares? It's like, how much effort do you think this is going to be? Like, can I estimate it? No, you just have to read the description and make like a gut check. Like, product managers care. Fibonacci dartboard. That's what I need. Oh, God, that's a brilliant product, actually. <laughs> Googling it. There's, there's, uh, there's planning poker and there's actual poker cards. So, Fibonacci dart, dartboard would be the next uh, agile. Like Wait, you really don't already available. Spin too, like as you're. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> wheel of Fibonacci it's would like be a wheel, good one. Yeah. And that's Wait, we... how Gary made his first million. Um, the second, I don't know. I shouldn't. Presume. No, I haven't made my first million yet. I mean, I don't know. Like maybe in my entire life, I've been here a lot of years. It's possible. No. no. What would that have? Aaron. What's Aaron came up with our our next get Rick get rich quick uh, scheme, which is um, buying like uh, clip cuttings or seeds from really expensive plants. And oh, so, okay, backstory. Oh, we we got, we got uh, Arrow Gardens, which are these like, um, I, I, got, I got her an Arrow Garden farm, which is this big uh, hydroponic sorry, sorry, thing um, that has uh, lots of different like pods where you can put plants and, and grow your in indoor, an indoor garden. Um, and it has, it's, it has like a light system and stuff in it. And it, so it like circulates the water, it turns the lights on and off. No it actually has Wi-Fi, so you can do stuff. Uh, so then we got a second one, a smaller one, uh, it doesn't have the work? Wi-Fi, but, but has, uh, no, it's, it's, uh, it's a, uh, bounty, I think. No, a harvest. Is this yeah. Can you please share an affiliate link? In the I will. Oh, it Thank won't you. be affiliate, but I will share a link. Um, anyway, uh, so it's Make been sure really cool. Yours. It's been really cool uh, because the um, the plants have like really taken off really really easily like faster and better than we had anticipated. Uh, we we've done some like starting plants from seeds and these like heated like bed things and gotten sort of mixed success. Um, and these things have really just been like like every single thing that we've planted succeeded. We expected failures and everything succeeded. So like it's been like wow, this is really good. So it's overabundant. Yeah. So um, the the get rich quick scheme is um, taking seeds or um, or clipping cuttings from these really expensive plants, putting them into an arrow garden until they grow bigger, and then selling them. And there's these plants that you can get like a tiny little six inch uh, thing for like three hundred bucks or something. So if you just focus on those, you get them like like pay sixty nine bucks for like the seed or the the leaf or whatever, and then sprout it off of that until it's this big, and then it's worth three hundred bucks. And we just do it in the arrow garden, like. And then you could cut pieces off of that plant and sell like the pieces for $300. I don't know. You're starting to make sense. And that, right. That's a little, a little, I, I told her, I told her if you can, if you can, if you can make, if we can figure out that we can make $600 by selling two of those things, things yeah. then we can get a new arrow garden and dedicate it just to that thing. So that's that's our business model. If we can sell two three hundred dollar plants, a total of six hundred dollars, we can get a new arrow garden, and this can be a legit business. Wow. The arrow gardens uh, regular retail cost is like nine hundred bucks, but like I got ours for five something, um, and you can get them from Walmart and some other uh, retailers for about five hundred bucks, ish. It's like the lowest I've seen. There was there was a there was a screw up in Lowe's system a few weeks ago where they had them like discounted like ridiculously. I think somebody like I don't know what oh, happened. The input, yes. Yeah. yeah. So so we uh, we had ordered a like one hundred dollar Arrow Garden farm, um, and unfortunately had our uh, had our order canceled. <laughs> Sadly, there's a lot of people that signed up for that too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we do have a topic, yeah? We do. Uh, it's not topic, Arrow Garden. 
It's not Arrow Garden. The topic is Johari Window. Johari Window. Two words. Is this not the... Hold on, hold um... on, hold on. I need to get a spelling <laughs> Let Chris first. write it down before you guess. <laughs> J-O-H-A-R-I? Yeah. Excellent. Johari Window. Okay, continue, Gary. forward. He's on it. I am now doubting my um, initial thought. No, like, no, oh, go with the guy. Go no, no, I'm going, I'll, go, I'll, I'll explain it anyway. Um, and the reason I'm doubting is because of the way this topic was set up as uh, potentially something we would all need to Google. So if this, what I'm about to explain were this simple, it would not necessitate Googling. But anyway, what I was thinking was the Jahari window, I believe, and I still believe, even though it won't require Googling, so I'm wrong, is that it's the space in orbit around a star um, that would support uh, the correct temperature uh, for um, like human habitation. Because named we are in a very Alpha strange- Alpha Johari. What's that? Named after Alpha Johari. Yeah, yeah. Um, because we're in this strange space. We're like, I don't know what the number is. It's, it's bafflingly small though, that earth would have needed to, I mean like small, like it's more than like 50 feet, but uh, and on an astronomical scale, it's bafflingly small where Earth would it needed to be like on a smaller or greater orbit um, that um, uh, would, we would, wouldn't have been a habitable rock. Uh, yet here we are. Damn, the luck or something. I don't know. Uh, and, well, I like and, your answer, but. Yeah, it's not right. It's not right. <laughs> yeah, That's a, it's okay. But I like, uh, I like the concept. It, yeah, I like, I like I it. mean, it could be right, Allison. It's it just not be. right to the humans that live on this planet. Johari could be the name of an alien species that have observed this phenomenon for, for eons and have been making calculations and that it is actually, we're just using this alien terminology uh, to describe a terrestrial uh, phenomenon. Infinite universes. It is correct. What's our <laughs> podcast like on the other universes? <laughs> Do we just pretty much the same. know all the answers? Yeah. No, pretty, yeah. it's pretty much the same. <laughs> no, in, just, that's the bad part. Just in, uh, just in Klingon. <laughs> no, it would be in English. It would be exactly like this, <laughs> only with billions of listeners. And, and it would be different. That would be like infinite. The difference is that we are actually celebrities. No. I, the, P- I mean, people people would uh would boycott spotify just to listen to us <laughs> are we not on spotify can no, we're we, on Sp- can we we're actually, spotify should we remove ourselves from spotify we could do so if, if i mean if does it, it like actually do anything like our, i guess the first question is uh listener is, <laughs> are you <laughs> Are, is anybody is anybody listening uh, that uses Spotify for their their podcast feeds? And if so, I would hate to force you into a workaround. But if not, like if we don't have any, like if I don't even our know or Apple or whatever, I don't even know how RSS director. I don't even know how to get stats Napster. for. Uh, I can't think of any other podcast things, but I'll keep mumbling while you talk. <laughs> I don't even know how to get stats for our uh, Spotify uh, uh, feed. Okay. Well, I could probably figure it out. If it's between <laughs> one and N, we have to say fizz on the third listener and buzz on the buzz. fifth listener. Fizz buzz. fizz buzz. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yes. Somewhere wow. between fizz and buzz. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I just, I, I, I've, I've been playing with that stupid data structure in my head now because it was just a fun conversation, but like, Never mind. We don't need to do this. <laughs> no one cares. Like literally, no one cares. Like this is not. This is not part of the Luigi window. What was it called? I, Johari. Uh, <laughs> I actually like. I Luigi actually. Luigi window is very different. It's the part in Mario Kart where you have to go in between Mario and Wario. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi window. <laughs> oh, it's so wonderful. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually like the, uh, Juhari window. We have we we have to get to the like the obvious is just you know uh, in the mystical land of Juhari. Uh, it is the just, obvious. It is just a window. <laughs> Whoa, back to up. the Juhari desert. That's all. Um, 
And just you look out the window like, and it's a Johari like, window. It's a window that uses a Johari mechanism for opening and closing. That would be a joke. <laughs> <laughs> is that our first spin take? Is that our first spin take? I feel like that is just such an achievement. We should sign off. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. See you next Thanks time. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. <laughs> No tea actually escaped my mouth. Oh, <laughs> so so close. I don't know if it counts as a spit take. <laughs> so close. <laughs> oh, I had Carmex I in like my fingers. We should all know better than to drink liquids <laughs> during this. So. That that usually usually when I'm making the uh, the featured image for the episode, I usually will pick the last frame. I think that that this might need to. <laughs> I might need to find the frame where I. I'm about to spit out my tea. How many, just because I'm curious, um, how many frames are in a standard episode roughly? Is it, is it like tens of thousands or is it hundreds of thousands? I don't, I don't know, like. I mean, typically are, film is 25 or 26 frames per second. Um, is that also computer video? I, it's a standard something, yeah. And, it, and, and so, okay, so the human eye can see 24 frames per second. So cinematography said, we're going to make it 25 frames per second to make it a little bit smoother. And I think that film does 26 frames per second. Um, but digital technology can be whatever. Um, it's just an algorithm. It's just a number that, that the, you know, it's a number that you plug in and say, you're going to divide this thing into this many pieces. Yeah. Um, so, well, I would, so I would, I would, okay. I would expect that it was like probably 26. So that means uh, 1,500 per uh, minute-ish. You said 26? Yeah. OK, well, that's 1,560 per minute. I don't know why I couldn't do that math in my head. But, <laughs> um, and let's say each one's like 45 minutes. So we're talking 70,000, so tens of thousands. I don't know why it matters. Like if it was like because you several need to hundred thousand versus. Buzz. Yeah, I need to figure out how many times we would see fizz or buzz during the duration of one of these episodes, approximately. Or as long as I'm within an order of magnitude, it's close enough. For I just pictured you re, re cutting the podcast into different frames based on fizz or. <laughs> I'm sure. You I'm could, sure we could write. I'm sure we could write a uh, software that would insert a frame of fizz stop. or buzz. I don't need this project. <laughs> stop it. No, there's so many other projects. So many other you know, fizz buzz filter. That, <laughs> it's just like, of like the screen would flash fizz and buzz yes and then otherwise it's a regular frame oh it would be like it would make you sick to your stomach yeah that can't be healthy <laughs> what do you so think is buzz on a fibonacci sequence so the beginning it's a lot and then it becomes less and less and then by the end it's just like once or whatever fibonacci fizz buzz <laughs> That actually sounds way more interesting than standard fizz buzz because then you would need to the the the, the coal the soul the never mind it doesn't sound that interesting. <laughs> I can't remember what the first word is in this in this topic. Can you Johari. Say it one more time? Johari. Johari. God, I don't know why it's not sticking in my head at this point. It's like it's like when you you know when you're supposed to do like the thing where you like throw noodles against the wall and they're mm -hmm. like they stick if they're done. It's just not sticking. My, it's like my, my brain is Teflon coated right now. It's just like sliding right off. Um, I, uh, I, uh, ha oh. <laughs> I, uh, yesterday I decided yesterday morning, I decided I was going to do French onion soup, but it was too late because I had not already put the onions in a crock pot 12 hours before I needed them. Um, but apparently if you do like the, you can like over like an hour or so, like with some sugar in there, you can get roughly the same outcome uh brown onions and uh so i made anyway short story boring i made french onion soup yesterday uh and cut a uh piece of bread and put it in there and like a pile of gruyere cheese on gruyere cheese on top and melted it and then uh got like nice and crispy and uh and now i'm hungry that's that's where we're going with this after this before the next i haven't had lunch yet so i'm i'm just like i know <laughs> I had some leftover pizza at like 11 o'clock. So four hours ago, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm dragging. That's what I just, that's what I just had before, before this. And I'm, I had too much pizza and now I'm full.
Too, too much pizza? Or is it the next generation? It's possible after a certain age to have too much pizza. Oh. Can I tell you something <laughs> funny that happened yesterday? Like, like funny in the sense that like we should all think it's funny, not just to me. Like, it's very funny. Um, so we have talked. I have talked. Not we. I have talked about NASTAR on the show, uh, which is uh, it's the the redneck racing series mm -hmm. in the states. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to be clear on that because that is very much what it is. Uh, the ownership is trying to move away from that stigma because the, obviously the market is only so big, and they would like more money because of capitalism. So the capitalist imperative to make more money is to not cater to just rednecks. So how do you do this? Oh yeah, I said that, and you can quote me on it. Put it on my tombstone. Uh, speaking of pizza, God, this is weird. Um, so, so it's the Jahari window. It's the yeah, window of weird. weirdness. So they Bermuda Triangle, but smaller. <laughs> yeah, the season starts the Sunday after the Super Bowl, which is the NFL final game of, of the year, and that's uh, this coming Sunday. And so the yeah. first game, first game, the first race in NASCAR is always at Daytona. It's a Daytona 500. <laughs> that's the first race where you can win and get like points that count towards the postseason. Who cares? So they always have before the Super Bowl week, they always have what they call the clash. And it's like a preseason race. There's money for the winners, but there's no points. And it's just, it's, it's whatever. So this year for the clash, they use the Coliseum. See, I, I thought Angeles. the clash was a punk band. I did too. But if you Google it, you will find out quickly that it is a NASCAR event. Um, if you're in certain regions of the country, the rest of the world, you'll get the clash. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, yesterday they were at uh, the Coliseum in USC, uh, at USC. In downtown Los Angeles, they laid down a quarter mile track on top of the football field and had 50,000 people in downtown LA show up for like a, like a bunch of like short track style races. Um, and uh, Ice Cube did a halftime show. Yes, a halftime show. 75 laps in, they, they park the cars and he rolls up in his Impala and hops out and walks in up on stage, does a show. And like Ice Cube is hyping the crowd about NASCAR, about NASCAR on Fox. Um, <laughs> and, it, and I mean, I just watched it in just like abject awe that NASCAR could do this with a straight face. Like, <laughs> like I mean, on so many levels, like on one level, like they spent millions of dollars to put this temporary track, track down, like on top of a football field that they're tearing up. It was 48 inches above the football field. Yeah, just logistics is just... It, it was, it's just, it continues to boggle my mind. And they had a tremendous turnout of people in person. Um, like, it, like, I, we are, we are clearly uh, in the South where I, my family's clearly in the South. And so NASCAR is a thing for some folks around here, but it's been like the biggest kickoff uh, as compared to, uh, I guess, ever I've seen. And it's fascinating that uh, they were like, yeah, Let's let's like go to like the last city that should have a NASA. I mean, probably <laughs> the last city. I mean, maybe like Seattle. I mean, there's there's a few. I think LA has got to be top five for sure. But they were like biggest market, uh, definitely not the South. In case you need a geography <laughs> lesson, uh, definitely it's not our traditional Southern family. California. Maybe maybe, they, that's... maybe there's this huge pod of people who never get to go, and so they're like, this is it. This is our chance. <laughs> it was. Uh, but, honestly, but I feel like I feel brilliant, like, fun to watch. There is there is uh, if you're into that kind of thing. If you're not, there I is get some it. sort of of race auto racing track just outside of Vegas, and Vegas yeah. isn't that far from LA. And uh, for that matter, there there's they do all sorts of stuff in the Salt Flats uh, in Utah. Um, yes, for sure, yes, so, Vegas is a, is a big stop. Um, Phoenix is where they have their their championship race every year. So it's not like they avoid the West. There's a no, a track no, but in if Fontana. you had said if you had said Vegas or Phoenix, I would have been like, mm, yeah, all right. But like Yeah. Like not even just like the outskirts of LA, like middle of LA. Yeah. Like like camera shots where you see these cars in the Hollywood sign. Like that's weird. <laughs> and the other angles were like downtown LA. Like it was yeah, yeah. And I, I give them a ton of credit for doing something just like obscenely out of what anyone who's observed the world would call like normal for them so so flow on bundles no that's not today's topic so jihari window <laughs> yeah. now what is it uh so it is a 
a cognitive psychology tool to help you understand your relationship with yourselves and others. And it was created by Joseph Luft and Harrington Ingram. And they combined the their Joseph and Harrington to come up with Johari. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not how that Wait, works. Wait, time out. What year did this happen? Um, 1955. No does not work i agree with chris if it was like 16 something i'd have been like those guys were edgy as fuck <laughs> edgy on the on the cusp um but, but no 19 something no it's sorry basically, guys basically if adults. you do want to google it, it might help to visually understand what i'm trying to describe but it's a square separated into four other squares like a window um mm -hmm. so quadrants and basically you get a bunch of adjectives that describe your oh. own personality and put them in a square and then your peers get the same list and choose an equal number of adjectives that describe you. And then they're separated into their appropriate quadrants. So it's basically like the part of ourselves that we see and that others see, the part of us that others see, but we don't see. The part so it's of like us a Venn we... diagram of feeling. Yeah, so the part of us that we see, but we don't show others. And then the part of us that we don't see and nobody else sees. <laughs> And I also, oh, I'll send, I'll put the link in Slack afterwards, but I found How, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that lower right quadrant, the, yeah. the not known to yourself and not known to others. How do you put things there? That's, no. that's, the, that's the part that I'm having trouble wrapping my mind around. Cause I'm just like, oh, is it just all the things that no one has picked? <laughs> <Right>. Like, <laughs> like I'm trying, just organizationally, I'm trying to figure out how, uh, and I discovered a site that does it, and then you enter in a unique name, and then you can send other people to your window. And I thought it would be fun if we all did it after the episode. Yeah, for sure. Oh. Um, and then I also found one that basically they're like, if you can take criticism, here's one for like the opposite side. So like all the shitty adjectives. Like, let's, just, <laughs> let's just ignore that. I want to hear nice things. <laughs> yeah, because the 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 johari adjectives uh looking at wikipedia is all like pretty positive stuff yeah like maybe the worst one is nervous or tense or but right. that's like my own or religious my own projection on those things right it's so religious. <laughs> seems about right yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry 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 that was me being overly snarky <laughs> Yeah, you so that's apologize. the Jahari window. Apparently, sometimes you have to do it at jobs. And I was like, that's interesting. Ooh. How weird would it have been? Jesus. Like, oh, yeah. actually. No. I'm uncomfortable to admit that I just filled the snow. <laughs> <laughs> um, Adjectives that neither subject nor peers selected go here. Yeah, it is the everything else. They represent subjects, behaviors, or motives that no one participating recognizes either because they do not apply or because of collective ignorance of these traits. Collective ignorance. So yeah, it's, it's, it's the everything else. It's oh, everything else goes there. Interesting. I'm everything and I am nothing. So I get, and I guess that, great. I guess that makes sense because if the idea <laughs> is to sort of, uh, eke out, um, uh, like things about yourself that other people perceive in you and also things about you that you perceive about yourself. Like there might be things that I don't think of that I don't associate with myself that other people do. So they'd be in my unknown quadrant, but they'd be in someone else's like, I don't know, whatever other quadrant. And then it's like, oh, well, I didn't realize that. And maybe that's a thing that I should like explore, or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. journal about, et cetera. What does your shirt say? My shirt says, don't panic and always oh, and carry a towel. towel. Okay. It makes a lot more sense when I can see all of it. Yeah. <laughs> it says Johnny panic. <laughs> Donnie. <laughs> yeah. Donnie panic is a, uh, is a musician. Uh, he tours Donnie every once panic. in a while. He's got this really weird guitar that's shaped like, you know, a, a bathroom sign. Bathroom sign. Yeah. You know, like the, 
uh, the the triangular uh, sign with like the, but he, the one the one that Donnie Panic uses is is the one that's like the like the unisex bathroom. So it's got like the the stick figure with like half a skirt. Yeah. Does anybody sell that article of clothing? Like half half as a skirt and half as a pant. Is it a pant if it's only one leg? Or is it yes. still pants? It would be a single pant. So I mean, there is there there are skirts. Which yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking not the about same like thing. asymmetrical, yeah. like le- like split left and right. Like I love this half. Time. That's not what I'm talking about. Look, I have convictions here, and this is one of them. This is a piece of clothing I would like to own. That the but how do you know? How do you know if the it's, right side is a pant leg? How do you know? Or maybe nothing at all because you can't tell on that stick person image. Are they wearing pants? Maybe they're just naked on that half. I it, right. Well, how do you know it's 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 a half pant, half skirt, and and not like the skirt just flares out on one side. It could just be tight on the other side. I'd wear it. Sure. Um, but also, um, I, I have a thought that I just can't get wrapped around. I can't, I can't latch onto it in the time left. It's too much stress at this point in my day. I'm sorry. I'll share it if it comes to me in Slack. I just, I can't, I can't lean into it. Y'all. It was, it was a really good conversation about the, the, the skirt pants, but it's, it's gone. It's gone. Uh, also, I don't know if you saw, but on the Johari window um, Google results, there's one that has arrows showing. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at Binary Jazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.